Blog Talk Radio. Oh, hang on, that bell was on. Today is I'm used to it. Used to it by June, now. <laughs> June 11, 2017, and oh, it's, it's, by the way, it's Sunday, and school is officially <laughs> in. Hey now, <laughs> I'm Mitch. <laughs> Once again, it's on, and I am joined by my two illustrious co-hosts, um, the jazzy and somewhat funky Aaron. Hello, what's up, y'all? And the funky, but not generally jazzy. <laughs> Sometimes. Maybe the other way around. Anthony. And. Uh, the other way around. What up? What up? Funky, funky, jazzy, jazzy, funky. I don't know jazzy, which one. Jazzy, but sometimes funky. Jazzy, but sometimes funky. Okay. <laughs> Mostly jazzy, and a little bit funky. Today um, is the Jazzy Funky Show, where we will um, further explore the origins of um, African American music, since we are still in African American Music Appreciation Month. <laughs> Thank you, Obama. <laughs> and um, so we're going to start with the origins of funk music. Since funk music is integral to hip hop, there wouldn't be hip hop without funk. It just wouldn't exist because that, that's just the basis. Mm-hmm. Um, jazz kind of came in, came in a little bit later, but so uh-huh. funk is. Um, a musical genre that originated in the 1960s and um, by African Americans, obviously, and they created a more rhythmic, more danceable type of music from the soul music that they were already making. It's kind of a mixture of soul and jazz and it and R&B a little bit, but it, it de-emphasizes melodies and chord progressions. Mm-hmm. that you would see like in R and B or you would see in jazz. And the thing that it that it that is that drives funk is groove or bass line or like drums. Like it's extremely percussion um oriented. Like it like I don't know if you guys remember or did you ever see the movie um um Get On Up about James Brown? Like I saw part of it, yeah. I didn't see that one. But he was talking about he was talking to the band and he told him he asked him what's that and he was like that's a drum and he was like well, what's that he said that's a, he's like no everything is a drum <laughs> like that but that's what funk is like mm-hmm. you play every instrument hard like it's percussion it don't matter what it is like you you know you play a, the cymbals like they drums you <laughs> you hit those everything hard like it's a drum because everything is considered like you know hard driving everything has to be towards the rhythm it's aptly titled too because just now listening to you try to describe how it sounds the first word that comes to mind is funky yep <laughs> and that's kind of yep like that's kind of where it came from because it was like oh like, you make this ugly face man, like, man, that's, like that's funky <laughs> you make this ugly face like oh uh-huh. <laughs> like oh like whoa like where is that? How did you get that? Like what? But um, after um, like the mid sixties, you get some people who get their hands on it and really just start doing it to death. <laughs> I hate to, you know, ha ha, you know. <laughs> um, and some other people are Sly and the Family Stone, obviously. Um, Parliament Funkadelic was integral. Um, Curtis Mayfield was a big one. You got a lot of funky stuff coming from people like, oh, who's my dude? Um, 
Oh my god, I love him so much, and he, it, I cried when he died. Isaac Hayes. Oh like, yeah. A lot of funky, a lot of real, real severe funky people. But James Brown is probably one of the most integral people when you're talking about hip hop. Probably the most notable too. Yep. Because we sampled every freak like James Brown should have like took everybody to task about that. Like he really <laughs> <'cause> he, <laughs> like, I, I mean like if you heard all of your shit just being <laughs> <laughs> like that. Yeah. Like every and like we took so much and there were like a lot of famous um funk funk bass lines and funk drums that were used especially. Right. And the, but the most, I think one of the most notable was Funky Drummer. And Funky Drummer came off his song Funky Drummer, and mm-hmm, that, right. that was it was played by Clyde Subblefield, who just died earlier this year. Rest in peace, for Clyde Subblefield. Yeah, I was watching it. Uh, I was watching that sampling documentary, and um, he was talking about like how he didn't even understand like why hip hop artists took from that uh, particular uh, drum sequence so heavily like he was like he had other drum sequences that were better <laughs> like, I, was yeah, gonna, yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. I was gonna comment on that too yeah. I was gonna comment on that too it's like it seems to be like a trend even though we don't want to admit it to gravitate to what's trendy or what's popular mm. so you see this homeboy flipping funky drummer you're like oh I can flip it and I can flip it better or whatever or at least back then but now it's like you know Right, well, there but were that other ones that got used a lot too, but besides that one, like um, the the trance from Ashley's Rose clip by the Soul Searcher, yeah. got used um, a lot. But if you you, you want to you want to spend something that's gonna get the people dancing, or you want to play with popular, absolutely. You know? And well, yeah. I mean, there were like like I said, there's about ten or twelve of them that like James Brown, Funky President, um. Was that James Brown or was that a JB? Because see, James and his whole crew would blend together sometimes. So sometimes you'd be like, uh, but like Bobby Brothers, I'm, um, son, oh, what's the name of the song here? That one got sampled a lot. Um, oh my God. Bobby Bird, I'm, uh, what's the name of the song? Well, okay, I can't remember right now. But Think by, Lick, um, by Lynn <laughs> Collins. Think by Lynn Collins got sampled so much. Yeah. Like a lot of stuff from the JBs got sampled. A lot of stuff from James himself got sampled. A lot mm-hmm. like people just use, they pick James Bone. That's not, it's not even <laughs> funny. <laughs> Go for everything. I, I used to wonder why Clive and the Black of People would just be like, give me money. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's probably frustrating keep trying to keep up with all of them. You know what though? They started getting watchdogs after, at, because at first it, it didn't catch up. Mm-hmm. It's, it's kind of like the internet. It was like there were no rules. It was just a wild west. Well, I mean, old folks didn't listen to hip hop. No. <laughs> nope. They didn't know. <laughs> and they didn't realize that we were ripping the shit out of their records. They had no clue. Like, wait, that sounds it's familiar. Too. That yep. familiar. <laughs> and just like when I was telling you about Childish Gambino, like I play yeah. that for somebody I know, and like they'll listen to um um to his song Ooh. Redbone and be like, when did Parliament make um um Funkadelic make some new shit? Right. He's paying homage. He's paying homage. <laughs> no. See, that's what I. That's what I'm talking about. Like, what's the line? What's the line between just like taking somebody's shit and paying homage? Well, I no, think I we did both. I mean, we definitely took their shit. No, I'm talking about. I'm talking about like with stuff like that. Redbone, uh, uh, John. I, I think. That I think is, it depends on the artist. Sometimes, at least. Yeah, I, I think don't, that. I, don't, I think he just jacked that shit. Yeah, I don't feel like that's I don't feel like that's paying homage. Like you know what I'm saying? And I feel like most I feel like most artists or people that appreciate music uh would feel like that's not paying homage. But how do you you know what I'm saying? How do you well, I mean nobody nobody seems to be complaining about it. No, because now Everybody it's illegal. Well Everybody until until somebody decides, like I was telling y'all before, remember I was telling you against me, I think somebody's gonna hear that and be like 
You know what? I don't like that it's, shit. It's been out for a while. It was in Get Out. Get Out was a, a huge box office hit. Maybe they're waiting for it to build. Cause I mean, look how long um, Uptown Funk was was out before Sequence. We're like, give us our fucking money, bitch. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> they let me bubble. And, and, they let me bubble. Angie Stone and her sisters are like, where our money at? We wrote them. We wrote that song. Yeah. Man, let that boy live. Let that boy live. Whoa. <laughs> Whatever. You can't I hate live with a hit like that. that. <laughs> I hate when you, <laughs> I hate when you take that stand. So. It's like, but I mean, part of me actually sometimes feels bad that we just really I know we we built hip hop on on funk we literally that was the foundation and we just that's the bottom layer though we just like that's the bottom <laughs> layer and we just <laughs> built that right on top of it and it's cool it's, I sometimes feel bad about it I mean times have changed it's a little different now I mean, all those freaking breakbeats, like all of them. But that's they boring. That's boring. Oh yeah, we'll get to that in a minute. (laughs) Um, but yeah, I like. Um, I think it's like segueing into that, I guess. Um, because Aaron and I will talk about this all the time too. Is not being able to get over too far, straight too far away from the original thing. Yeah, the rules are different, but there are yep. some rules. And people, people, people stray too far away from from what made from what made uh, a certain type of music that what it is. But we well, funk has label. its roots in jazz yeah. too, so that's yeah. true. But think about. Think about, and we'll talk about this a little bit more when we talk about jazz, but think about the reason why this music now is so dumbed down because <clears throat> hip hop is about what you sample from. Yeah, it's true that. And funk, and funk is arguably complicated, you know, a more, it's, it's, it's polyrhythmic, it's, it's complicated. Um, Jazz is, is like, especially if you're sampling from bebop, which most of those samples are like bebop and modal. There's not yeah. a lot of, like, like you don't hear a lot of, you know, big band samples or whatever. They're mostly bebop and mo- or, like, you know, free be jazz. It would be dope if we did. But, and I'm not saying, but it's still complicated. It's a lot but more complicated. Still, right. That's still, dang- that's still dangerous, though, because you see what happened when you start branching out with hip-hop. Like, we killed it. <laughs> no, but, but, but I would say part of the reason is because... We started from the bottom, and well, we're not here. I don't know where he's going. <laughs> we started from the bottom and dug our way down even further. <laughs> Apparently, we started from the bottom. We went up and we came back down and we dug some more. I think it, I think it all depends on how you sample. Like I don't think it it really matters where you sample from. I think it just depends on how you do it. That's- that's true to an extent, yeah. Well, no, it really yeah. is because, like, if you if you sampling from um, you know, uh, some shit that nobody ever heard of, uh-huh. then mm-hmm. you know, then you know, and that's and that's easier to do nowadays than it was before because of the internet. There's so much, there's so much out there. Yeah. Right. If you sampling from shit that nobody ever heard of, then you know, um. It could it could bring a new sound to you know what I'm saying like the uh, the foundation that hip hop was uh, born off of like you know what I'm saying like we talking about we talking about funk samples and how hip hop was born off of funk samples you know what I'm saying but it branched out from there like you got Jay Z on Reasonable Doubt sampling the stylistics and stuff like that you know what I'm saying well that I still I, I'm gonna still count that because it, it it was funk slash soul samples. A lot of that stuff yeah. is funky. You know, it's still funky. Because, like, um, Hurry Up This Way Again by the Stylistics is when you're talking about that he sampled. Yes. That song is funky as hell. <laughs> True. I can, at the yeah. same time, too, at the same time, too, like, what makes it great is, like, back then, like, 
if he was like say Aaron was a, a, a DJ or whatever and he sampled something that nobody heard before something like fresh or whatever I could listen to that same record and hear a whole different part or hear it completely different than he did and sample it in a different way and that's what made it like dope that's what made it decent exactly Basically, yeah you sure. and flip that but I mean like we were just talking about a minute ago like you listen to the sample now it's just a whole beat Right. They just, they, just the whole, they just take the whole beat and rap over it. Right? The whole bar and just be like, oh, look, let's just take everything. Not 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 let's deconstruct it and find new melodies and harmonies or whatever from other songs and paste them on it. Let's just take this yeah. whole song via, you know, um, <laughs> via, um, via Diddy. Oh. Oh. And... <laughs> And let's just like jack all of Stay With Me from the bars. Let's just jack the right, whole thing. Right. And like maybe inject a, like a, a stronger <clears throat> drum track up under that. Yeah, and let's class. just rhyme straight off of it. Just right on top. But you know what I realized though? Yeah. With all the access that we got now, like I realized that like a lot of people was just following whatever trend was popping back then. You know what yeah. I'm saying? It was like. They did. It, if everybody, if everybody was sampling one particular sound, you know what I'm saying? If, if you heard, like, you know, yeah. the top producers sampling one particular sound, everybody was sampling that one particular type of sound, you know what I'm saying? Where it's like, you know, and it's even, you know, it's no excuse to do that these days because, like I said, the internet, but, like, um, when you hear, when you hear um, certain uh, samples, you don't have to like sample the same section of the song that the last producer sampled. Right, right. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. And, um, you're phoning it in and you're lazy as hell, which that's what's <laughs> happening right now. Right. But that's what Ant's saying though. It's like, you know, you don't have to, you can be more creative with it, even if you found, even if you know the yes, song you that can, that person sampled. But, are the, but, the, but the question is, are you going to be? And that, that <laughs> kind of still goes back to my point, Aaron. You're right about you get a sound that was popular like because during the during the beginning when um dj cool herc was mostly sampling like funk reggae in the in the origins days and all of a sudden africa bambada came along and was like i'm gonna sample from i'm gonna sample all this crazy shit from anywhere and i'm gonna get draws from he got draws i think it was um that uh, documentary um, from off uh, Netflix about the origins. Oh my God, what is it called? It's called what is it called? Yeah, hip hop uh, uh, um, evolution. Hip hop evolution. Baby. Yeah. Yeah. Revolution. Something um, like that. Yeah. Everybody no, no, no. watch that. You know, hip hop. I, I, I want to say it's hip hop. I think it's evolution. I think it is. But, yeah. Um, where he's talking about how he got those kids from 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 Manhattan to like just flop because he was using different samples that weren't funk break samples but I mean in the right. beginning the funk break samples it wasn't just about the MC it was about the sound it was about what the b-boys and b-girls like to break to like you said last week talking about styles the MC was the cold club he was there to at the time the yeah at the time mm -hmm. yeah so I mean, you so you were catering to the, what what people b boy to, number one, number two. But he, Africa was like, well, they can both can b boy to a lot of different things, and he so he started taking breaks from other places, quote unquote breaks. But you, if you think about it, the electronic funk that he was pulling from, that shit still had breaks because yeah. it was still funky. So if if he's playing to the front from craft work or he's playing um oh well, to the front didn't get well yeah we broke to that we definitely broke to that like if you watch um <laughs> if you watch breaking one and two there were parts where they where they played craft work um to the I'm, a beat, and were, I'm a beat street kind of guy oh uh, no nah. you know what's funny you know what's funny so was i <laughs> <laughs> So well, I will but, say one thing about that. Um, b breaking one and two, not a lot of actual b boying happened in that movie. It was mostly <laughs> popping and locking, which is something that people. But we'll, we'll talk about that a whole lot more when we do our origin show and start talking about breaking. 
that gets that gets them out on the elements too. Well, it does. But when Africa did that. It was still funky. Yeah. Because it was still technically funk, you know, related breaks. And people started following suit because he was doing it. But and then the same thing with the, the uh, James Brown shit. Same thing. Like, people was like, oh, James, let's sample all of that. But right. arguably, that shit was still complicated. So it, it was still causing us to push forward and progress because we were sampling the things that were going to push us in a progressive direction and that's my biggest issue and problem I think is that it doesn't matter what you sample but it does if you sample some some old unfettered uncomplicated shit what is your shit going to sound like it, that right. adds to the message that, you, that the song as a whole sounds too like they were getting that and born and use mics talking about life's a bitch. Yeah. Like the sample itself speaks to the message of the song, but I guess that kind of depends on the artist, because most artists wouldn't care that much to know where the beat that they producer gave them came from, you know. Do you yeah, think that's a, I'm, I'm getting I'm getting a little bit tired of that shit too. Like if you if you sitting there sampling the record and you don't know where it came from or you don't like you know you just like oh. You know what I'm saying? That joint sound hot or whatever. Like, for example, Tory Lanez, like, you know, the with the uh, Brownstone sample. And he, like, he didn't even know. He don't even know who Brownstone is. Mm-hmm. But he sampled the record. And, um, you know, he, he made a hit off of it or whatever. And, like, that's what's going on now. Like, we got yeah, artists that... The, the samples are more relevant. Right, they not trying to they not trying to flip it, you know what I'm saying? As hip-hop has always done, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know... Flip whatever message the last song gave and turn it into some other shit. You know? I feel like that they really felt that shit too when they, like I think Nas cares. The, the everybody's always ragging on him and his beat selections, but I think he he tries like, to connect to the beat. That's the joint from Wild Style, yo. I need that. <laughs> <laughs> you are so dumb. <laughs> like, I feel like he connects to that shit like with that by himself. I feel like he really, like, you know, there are some people like, like Aaron is talking about, they listen to that beat and they have to connect to it before they can create to it. Exactly. I, I feel like too, with the, with the artists who really, who really take it personal, like the craft or whatever, that like they already got a connection to some of those sounds that's being sampled in the music. Like they got childhood memories of like their parents playing it and dancing in the house like, with I the Sunday like- dinner. I feel like that's more so uh, with the producers, though. I feel like the producers got more so a connection with the uh, actual record that they sampled than the artists actually did. And that's you know what? That's true. I was just getting ready to say that, too, because I was just getting ready to bring up G-Funk. Be- and that's why G-Funk was completely different than yeah. the funk that was being sampled on the East Coast. Then you went to the West Coast and you had people like Dre and DJ Quick, they weren't sampling the same kind of funk. Like, they weren't doing all that James Brown. They didn't borrow a lot from James Brown. They borrowed right. a lot of their stuff from a whole lot, like, completely different artists. Like, they borrowed a lot from um, Sly Stone. They borrowed a lot from Parliament Funkadelic. Like, you know, Dre loves his freaking Par- Parliament Funkadelic <laughs> sample. Yeah. <laughs> and it, and that, that just lets you know what, what um, different type of people was listening to on each part of the, uh, in each part of yep. the country, though. They like yeah. 80s funk too, that they love 80s funk out west. And so they sample right. a whole lot of stuff from 80s funk. That's the same. There's a lot of that going on now. There's a lot of that. Like re- the regional thing plays a big part in the, in hip hop nowadays. That's but true. it's like, it's so accessible and right? it's starting to bleed together. You know, like. Really? Atlanta. Atlanta and St. Louis bled in New York heavy. <laughs> I mean, but like, where, where, so where are these new, where is the, where are the new, where's the new stuff coming from, though? The internet is all coming, like, you get no, stuff, I'm saying, from, you get stuff like, from everywhere. But this stuff is, but it still has a sound. It has a sound, but it's traveling farther, so it's like influencing other sounds. So like, you got people in the Midwest now potentially listening to Meek Mill. And, and taking influences from Meek Mill with their own. No, we've always been like that. Whole, 
Yeah. The uh, Midwest is in the middle, so we've always been like that in the Midwest. The Midwest is, was, has never been like snobbish about shit. Like on the coast. East Coast, you East coast, coast has always been snobbish like that, and West Coast, listen to East Coast because that's the only thing that was there. Yeah, the, to, but. the East Coast snobby is shit, yo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even front though. Well, they got the right to be. They got the right to be. I'm good with that. But you know what? I think. I feel like they were snobby for a lot longer than they had a right to be. Like, Outkast was the saddest shit, and they should have been listening to Outkast all the time, Everybody, they should, listen. Everybody should listen to Outkast. They were not playing anybody from the dungeon. Shirt on or off. They just, right. they like, didn't I remember, I remember even when, um, I remember even when, like, T.I. and everybody from the South was popping, I was just like, yo, what the fuck is this? And, like, my <laughs> brother had just came back from Atlanta, and he was playing all this shit, Bone Crusher, T.I., and all this shit. I'm like, yo, what is this? Like, I don't more, know this. Like, you know now. I mean? like, so, uh, instead of, like, you being the exception now in the neighborhood, like, you being one of the few people on the block listening to Lil Wayne or some shit like that, like, everybody is now. Mm-hmm. Right, right, yeah. But I'm saying, like, okay, for instance, like, okay, G-Funk, you know, like, Isaac Hayes and all this, like, really, like, deep, funky shit, like, um, Zap and Roger and all that kind of stuff. Like, again, these producers, they had sound. Yeah. What the heck? Where are they getting this shit from now? I was looking at some some newer samples to see where they're sampling. Because they're still sampling. People think that they're not. Uh-huh. Lies, lies, all lies. But who, who's, who's the producers these days? I don't even know. Oh Jesus Christ! <laughs> um, well, you got a lot of people with sampling. I mean, not sampling, but uh, producing their own shit. Like you got people producing their own shit. Yeah. Like uh, we was watching the uh, big Aaron quick video. Aaron not like that. Ago. Yeah, I mean, I don't hate it, <sighs> but it gets it's to a point where like. It's yeah. yeah, it is. It is it's oversaturated. But like, it's not over, it's, like, I feel like I feel like that. There's no defining. <laughs> there, there's no fucking definition. It's all loose and shit. Like, like bad bowels. Like I don't want to hear this. <laughs> it's like we all just do our hands up and say, "Do whatever you want to do." <laughs> and just walk out of the room. <laughs> and walk away. <laughs> <laughs> whatever you want to do, I don't care anymore. Like y'all fuck this yeah. shit up. Y'all fool bar this shit. We leave it. <laughs> you know. You know. You know what really speaks to that though? Like I was watching a video with L.A. Reid and he was saying that uh, Future is like, you know, he like the new type of soul for uh, music. And I'm like, what are you talking about? I'm like, you L.A. Reid, you know better than that. <laughs> like, why are you I saying mean, it's crazy? It's as unsavory as it sounds. No, it is what it is. no. It is what it is. No. Like, he is not the future. The landscape is completely mm-hmm. different. I don't care. Fuck that shit. Future is I'm with Dr. Least. Boyce Watkins. He is a tap dancing watermelon chicken chicken <laughs> eating. <laughs> he is a straight up but, culture culture coon. But, no. But he may be all of those things. But look like a year or two from now, three years from now, five years. Look at designer. If that ain't some gremlin shit. Feeding them after well, midnight, giving them wet and all that. I'm telling now. you, like, it's, it's a horrible thing, but it's happening. So but you call that nigga a gremlin? Grip fucking gremlin. Like, <laughs> he ain't even Gizmo. He the one that popped out Gizmo back. Whoa! <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I said it. You know, I said but it. Gizmo, <laughs> wasn't a, Gizmo wasn't a gremlin. He Giz, was a Gizmo wise. wasn't a threat. Gizmo wasn't a threat. Gizmo was Diddy. <laughs> oh, shit. No, that's straight. You make, you make not the gremlin references. <laughs> All right, no. Gizmo, Diddy, Gizmo, Diddy, Gizmo Diddy was a ball guy. Gizmo no. Diddy, Diddy was the first one that popped out Gizmo a, back. No. Diddy is straight up straight. <laughs> Okay, Gizmo <laughs> is straight. Gizmo okay, came out. He ain't mean it. He ain't mean it. Gizmo <laughs> is sweet. Gizmo <laughs> was a sweet little mogwai. And Stripe strike. came out. He no, he was not a threat. And then Stripe came out and ate chicken after midnight. And now you got a shiny <laughs> fucking suit. <laughs> 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 Fucking up your sample. And look at it, and it's like you left them un, unattended, unattended for a while, and now they arm in arm singing, <laughs> taking over the game, like they're taking over the game. <laughs> it's, it's unsavable, it's, it, but it's happening. Like we gotta, oh, we gotta admit that it's happening. 
No matter how much you don't like it. We, we left the kitchen and turned the lights out. And then we, <laughs> we, we came in and turned the lights back on. And it was just roaches and rats. All oh over the place. And they ain't even All over the fucking place. Run. And they, they don't even run. scatter when you turn the lights on no more. They just... Joe's apartment all over again. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, nope. It's time for you to leave the apartment. We own that motherfucker now. Uh, it's the state of the game. It, it oh, Lord. Is. So that is, that's first period. That's hilarious. I can't with you. <laughs> like, I can't. Seriously. That is crazy shit, man. So, that's just hard now. That's just hard now. Out to lunch. I got out to lunch today. And it's funny because we just segued into that shit perfectly. <laughs> and I'm going to start talking about these, I hate to call them this again, but these damn idiots. Uh, <laughs> and their hatred of the fucking boom bap. They hate the origins. That, oh my god, the drums are boring. The drums are boring. <laughs> boom. I, I, I actually had somebody who I, that was like, he's in his, he's like 26 now, I think, maybe. Mm-hmm. I will I will not reveal his name. I won't say his name just to protect him right now. But he would just be like, like, imitating all the drums, all, all the funk drum samples. <laughs> this shit is weak. And I'm thinking to myself, I wish Clyde Silverfield was here so he could sit in front of you and play these drums. In person. In person. Or or he could like go you could go on to YouTube and look at it. The shit that they were doing is light years ahead of what you're doing. It only looks uncomplicated because you don't know shit about music. They don't know shit. They don't have an appreciation for it. They don't have an appreciation for it. They don't even know how to build a fucking song. Like that's why all their song songs are fucking meandering for days. The beat, <laughs> the fucking drums are supposed to anchor you, you dumbass. Well, I mean, <laughs> we at a point now where we cycle back to the production being the highlight of the track. But doesn't that still require drums? It uh, it did. Does it and really? And bass. No, and they rely on they rely on a lot of goofy shit. Like they want, you know, they what want saying? melody, like, like they, all this melody. Yeah, they want. They want this like 808s and melodies, and then like speed up your speed up your rap at the end of the song. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And oh yeah, he turned up or whatever. Like that shit is wet. Bro. That shit is mm-hmm. not. But none of that is musical. None of that is about music. Right. <laughs> it sounds though. It's turn. It's hype. That shit is Make a sign. That shit is a fucking shiny suit. Is what it is. <laughs> It is indeed a shiny. It's a shiny ass suit. That's what it is. It's not even a shiny platinum suit. It's a shiny yellow suit. No. Oh, you know dude. what is so stupid <laughs> is that once you like, and I and I hate to say this shit. I'm a cosign Puffy's dumb ass. <laughs> <laughs> he 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 made shiny suitness in art. They aren't even shiny suiting right. I ain't even trying to admit it. They for Copeland. They for now. I mean, but hey, I mean, Cameron did his thing with the pink. But there's mm-hmm. rules to this shiny suitness too. <laughs> not anymore. Not anymore. That was back in the day. <laughs> they don't wear shiny suits. They don't wear shiny suits now. They they got holes in their clothes. They well, wear dresses. Know, I'm, talking, I'm definitely Please talking pay. metaphorically at this point. Like they don't they don't do that shit correctly. Like. There was still, he's right. There was still a line that he didn't even cross. He had to. He had to. Like, the, like they still, like that shit was still. It went out a little too far, but it was still, you know, it had the, the components there for you to see, even if they were like, you know, remnants. <laughs> you know. But I mean, we so they far removed. Just, we so far removed now. I just, if I can get them at this point to just stop using the drums that came with the kit. <laughs> <laughs> I can't listen to these fucking drum kit beats. Like, tick, 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 tick. I hate that tick, 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 tick noise. You gonna get whatever kit I give you. <laughs> but these cats, you gonna get whatever kit come no. automatically preset. I wanna hear the boom, that. Until, until they make it to a collet level feature, then you're going to hear something different. 
what? <laughs> you're gonna hear the drum kit until they get to college, then college gonna give you a slightly different drum kit. What? I was watching the uh I was watching the rap critic talk about college. He was talking about how he sound like a narcissistic Pokemon. That shit is funny as hell. That's hilarious. Oh, that's fucking hilarious. A narcissistic Pokemon. He had the rag on the baby like that though. He, had the rag. Yeah, he went in, didn't he? <laughs> I bet you that baby is funkier than some of the stuff I'm listening to. <laughs> Maybe just his stuff. Maybe just his diapers on here, but you know, definitely. <laughs> but yeah, just, like these I weirdos. Like these weirdos, like they be talking trash about all these like old school drum beats. And like mm-hmm. they don't, they don't understand. Like if you understand that that's the foundation that you know what I'm saying, what you're doing is built on, then that's that's necessary. You know what I'm saying? That's just like um, um. I think we talked about it a while ago, like how uh, Raphael Sadiq. Like I like the way he, you know, he built off of um the old like you know '60s pop records. Yeah. Like he built he built off of that sound. You know what I'm saying? Because technically, what he's doing is R&B. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. It's like, you know, like you don't stray away from the foundation of what made you what you are. Well, if you do, once again, you get started from the bottom, and we're here. Mm-hmm. Is what you get. Well, and it's because we were like I was talking about earlier, and part of my point was it does depend on what you sample because when Puffy started, then I keep saying Puffy. <laughs> When you, it's hard, it's hard not, to, not to point the finger at. When you when when he started sampling, you know the the hits from the '80s, yeah, yeah, um, <laughs> and, and started making the shit point in a more popular direction, and then everybody else started doing that as well. When you started taking all these really popular songs, again, the music is going to automatically dumb down now. Right. Because you're Especially because you're successful. using all these Yeah, like you're because you're using all these like really, really popular songs that right. may have been really, really unfettered, uncomplicated. They weren't highly musical, you know, they might have been melodic. And some yeah, of it's not like it's not bad. Like like the sample for Stay With Me by the Bars for um Biggie's remix to um One More Chance. There ain't yeah. a damn thing wrong with using that song. No, it's, it's, the nothing, way it's nothing wrong with that song. It's the way he did it. Yeah, yeah. The execution is completely different. Yeah, but like if you talk about songs like you know, uh, uh, what's the uh the Diana Ross uh, uh coming out that one? And yeah, like, yeah. Uh, if you talk about like a simple like that, like that's that's technic that's a disco hit right there. And like if you know anything about this. If you know anything about disco, it's one of them like you know popular sounds that burnt out. And like, what you think gonna happen with, when you like start? And I was just getting ready to go there when you said it because disco. Is, a lot of folks don't know disco is basically watered down funk. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I mean it is what that's why you had people like like George Clinton. All those songs he made about you know here's our chance to dance our way out of our constriction. All those songs. He was make, taking a very strong stance against disco. People who love songs didn't like disco because disco took the polyrhythmic forms that were complicated and deconstructed them. It was like a four on the floor. And four on the floor is just you emphasize every freaking beat. Right. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. It's not two or the four or the one or the three. You know, you just, you hit every like you stress every single one, so it doesn't matter. Everybody can dance to it, right? And because it was so uncomplicated, like you just said, because it was that shit burnt out quickly, yeah. quickly. But but we didn't stay in that disco sampling phase, and so so our music was you know hip hop was able to move further up and progress because we started sampling from stuff that had more longevity it was more complicated it, it like hung around longer that's why people so, are sometimes counterintuitive with because like you want this simplistic shit that shit is not gonna last you're gonna be here today gone tomorrow with it and then you're gonna be bored trying mm-hmm. to find the next thing 
So with that in mind, why do you think that particular song was so popular when it came out? I've never been able to figure out. Because everybody loved that fucking song. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, you got to remember, like, this is a song, like, it wasn't it wasn't popular. It wasn't just popular when he sampled it. It was popular when the original record came out. Yeah. It was but like you know what, though? I'm massive. also going to point to the, the production on that song because even though that song was disco, that song against... Puffy could have done a better job. Like they could, I don't even know. At this point, you don't know if he produced shit or not. Because <laughs> Puffy would just slap his name on stuff. You know how that shit goes. Mm-hmm. Um, but and like he might have picked the records but never actually done anything to them. Not that there was much to do to him in the first place, but um that that production was some of the best disco production. That song was produced by Nile Rodgers. That was a Nile Rodgers song. Oh, okay. So Nile Rodgers and Bernard Wright and mm-hmm. I believe Tony Thompson on the drums, you know, like the whole rhythm section of Chic, like they were a fucking yeah, beat. Yeah. yeah. So that I'm was saying, like saying, the like time, creme de la creme of disco. That wasn't the bottom of the barrel of disco. So was that, was it safe to say that was like the mainstream watered down version of disco? <laughs> No, like like the equivalent. No, Chic was the like that was probably the best disco you were gonna get your hands on. Top shelf. Yeah. Yeah, it's 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 funny because like you know not being born in that era, like I talk to older people a lot. You know what I'm saying, especially when it comes to music. And um, my uncle was uh, explaining to me how like you know disco was like the way we look at like certain uh music now where it's like i'm tired of hearing that shit he said that's how it was for disco back then it was like yeah. you, know, you could you cannot get away from the bgs and what's crazy is i love i love the bgs like i listen to the bgs Me too. And, um he was like you can't get away, you couldn't get away from the bgs you couldn't get away from uh uh uh, uh who was it you were just talking about now rogers now rogers but i mean like, the same you know, thing could be said today too i say the same thing all the time I guess the same comparison with every with every turn or change in music. Like you got that one group that's like used to the sound, and you got the other group that's like tired of hearing the sound. Right? Yeah. Yeah. That's true. But but again, look at what he just said and, and what we're saying now, and this conclusion we've come to. Like we've said this before, disco burned out and went away. Mm-hmm. And Couldn't disco ain't said, come back. But. Hip hop has lasted so long, but it's partly because of what I what I was just saying. I think it's because we sampled from things that elevated, and we kept elevating, and we kept elevating. And we like in a minute we're gonna start talking about jazz. Like we moved from the thing that that elevated us from the disco sample, the funk sample, you know, really getting grounded in that, and then we moved, you know, progressed a little from that into the place where funk got its shit from the even more complicated shit with jazz right mm-hmm. but that's so, why these that's why these weirdos they out to lunch because they don't they don't understand that foundation of it they don't know what they listen to they just hear a bunch of none of that songs. matters none of that matters none of, i mean honestly you gotta admit i don't listen to music from 60 years ago well, shame on you. <laughs> I do sometimes, but that's just because I'm a weirdo. But I don't expect everybody else to listen to music from 60 or 70 years ago. But see, that's annoying minute, to me. That's annoying years to me. And I'm going to tell you why. Because if you... Perspective if you, has changed. We just talked about this, how a three-year-old song is a throwback song. I, it is. I understand that. But that's annoying <laughs> to me because if you listen to a genre that is built on that, like I listen to I listen to hip hop and like I grew up listening to Motown music and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. But being a fan of hip hop, it made me it made me dig deeper because I'm like you know uh, mm-hmm. I heard that song before on an older record. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So like you know when I listen to other artists, it made me you know try to figure out where I heard this particular That's song from before yeah. and that kind of thing. Like you know what too. I'm saying? So. I feel like I feel like hip hop is one of those genres that teaches you that there's other music that came before this. It and really a lot, does. And it a really lot, does. When you sit there, when you sit there and disregard it, that's kind of disrespectful. <laughs> it's <laughs> not kind of disrespectful. It's like it, it, 
it's not kind of disrespectful. It's it's flat out like you're you're causing destruction to the to the the whole genre with that because but you know it, at the same it's time. not really like rock music in the same way because like we take remnants of other shit and press it together mm-hmm. and make something out of it. At so the same you, time, at the same time, you got kids. Now making music, who grew up listening to Nelly and Lil Bow Wow, so like their idea of pioneers and their level of standards is a little different than ours. But right? that was the yeah, point. Yeah, I get that, but that's the yeah. over. That's I blame that on the oversaturation of it all. Yeah, yeah it was everywhere by then. It was like, oh, man, it was everywhere, and it wasn't the best stuff that was out there. Well, no, it was horrible. But I mean, you know what I blame that on? I'm not pressing that button again. <laughs> no need we get the idea Lex Luthor like I remember I remember one day I was at work at Mercy and we was watching um watching music videos in there and um Curtis Blow's basketball came on and all the girls in the class were sick they was like oh my god buy wall copy <laughs> like what are you crazy? I don't thought that was get so the fuck out of here oh my god <laughs> It was sick. It was like, oh my god, my god, Jesus! I like, I was sending Aaron sample shit earlier in the week, and I was, I was pointing out the sample that the sample that they missed. Yeah. Like, I'm yeah. pissed that they that they showed the sample and they didn't they they skipped two samples ahead. Like, yeah. they showed, you know, the sample for um. Like there was this one song I remember I was teaching one time, so it was back in his back in the day and one of the kids was playing um always be my sunshine. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. <laughs> by by Jay Z. And there and there was so one of my kids thought he was like hot shit because he was like, um um the fearless for you that before and y'all don't know who that is and I was like um I was like that is very true. <laughs> The Fearless Four did use that before. I was like, but Kraftwerk has the original sample. The original like song is a Kraftwerk song. It's not right. like Jay Z stole that from the Fearless Four. They both right, stole yeah. it from Kraftwerk. Like I'm, I'm guilty of that too. I'll do that too. <clears throat> like I'll be at work and like they be listening to Pandora and the old drum come on. I'll be like, oh, Jay Z used that. <laughs> Are you idiot? Like, this, is the original. Uh, this is the original, you idiot. This is right, the right. original. Yeah, see, but that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying about knowing about that foundation because, like, you if you know the foundation, then you know you gotta dig a little bit deeper than just you know what I'm saying. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, um, a song that came before Jay Z. Yeah. But well, I, like I was the one I was talking about was um Anaconda. Right. And the the Anaconda sample for most everybody that you know knows. In their mind, the Anaconda sample came from Sir Mix a Lot, Baby Got Back. Mm-hmm. But he sampled that from um, a hometown group. I'm from Detroit, Channel One. The song is called Technicolor. Mm-hmm. That's where the song originally mm-hmm. came from. See, that's annoying to me too. Like, why are we got nowadays? We got people sampling. Like people that sample. Why are you sampling somebody that sample? <laughs> That's ridiculous. Because <laughs> the, when, that, when that Ashanti <laughs> sample came out, everybody was so freaking pissed when Ashanti came out with that sample of Biggie Small sampling. <laughs> oh my goodness. They, they were maybe she didn't know better. I mean, but I mean, no, it, I think they maybe wanted it was sound from Biggie. I think they wanted Biggie sounds incorporated. It might have been cheaper to clear that one. Too. Would it be cheaper? Now you gotta pay two different people. I don't know. Instead <laughs> of paying, paying for the bar sample, you gotta pay for the bar sample. Then you gotta pay for Biggie, cause Biggie, you, it's like two songs you gotta pay for now. Uh, right. That's uh, yeah. That's dumb as hell. Go to the original. <laughs> and then, and then it's not even it's not even like one of those dope uh samples where you paying two people because you sample from two, you know what I'm saying, two of the originators. You sample from somebody that sampled. So you gotta pay yeah. them in the in the originator. <laughs> that's ridiculous. Yep. Which is so really you, dumb. You, you buying somebody's test answers basically. Yeah. Not like yep. the official test answers, but somebody test answers. Like, I got a B plus for you, a B plus for you right here. 
<laughs> I got a B plus on this joint. You want this? Uh-huh. Yo, I do it, and then you fucking get a C plus. The fuck? <laughs> <laughs> like an A plus came Heavy out, that's why I got a B plus, and now you took it, and now you fucking gave me a C plus. Uh, I don't want your damn C plus. I want these little millennials to get their shit together. I, I feel like, again, we always say this, but I feel like there is a place for what we're doing. I think the place for there's a lot of people that are springing up now that are pulling back to to people knowing shit about the culture. I think it's more of them too taking taking advantage of the same platforms that the people that are destroying the culture are using to fight back. Yeah, I mean, but that's what you gotta do. That's what you're supposed to do. I got it's my awesome. right that's up in the air right now as I speak. Of course. <laughs> as well, you should. Because I'm not going to let you just, you know, shit all over my fucking boom bap and my funk drum. If it's that easy for you, I'm going to do the same thing, too. Bruh. The funk drums is what makes the shit. Look, I can't listen to this shit without the funk drums. Right, that's what make it what it is, though. Like, you can't, like, that's just like what we was talking about, not to go off subject, but, um, like, how, you know, that Ghost in the Shell movie came out. And, like, oh, I was God. I was more annoyed the, at the fact that, you know, people was hype about a live-action movie of, like, groundbreaking animation. Like, this is groundbreaking <laughs> animation. And that's what, that's, what, that's what made Ghost in the Shell what it was, you know what I'm that saying? Shout out my enemy. That was part of the uh, excellent mm-hmm. mission, that's the word. Yeah, and like that's what made it what it was. No, so you not. can't sit there and be like, oh well. <laughs> here's a here's a copycat of the original that made it what yep. it was, and it's like no, like it's not the same anymore. It's not what it what mm-hmm. what it was supposed to be. Yep, like you literally took the guts out of it, the heart, all everything that was good about it, you removed, and you have left uh-huh. me with. I don't know what this is. I'm supposed to be left with like what I I'm it's supposed vegan, to think it is. Vegan bacon. <laughs> Who the fuck wants to eat vegan bacon? Exactly. <laughs> I mean, at least give me some coleslaw. Damn. Yeah, no, it's vegan bacon. It did Nobody not have want a fucking bacon. vegan it did bacon. Not have a thing. Whatever. I need some shit to have parents. <laughs> I need some shit that had a mom and a dad. Uh, a soul. I needed to have a soul. <laughs> yes. Wait a minute. Do plants have? I, I don't know. If <laughs> That's another episode. That's a whole another episode. That's but, a whole um, another show. That's a different podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, back from lunch, we are, and um, back from lunch, we are. Back from lunch, right. we are. <laughs> in, my, in my Yoda voice. <laughs> <laughs> and so now we're going to talk about um, jazz. And um, hip hop has, actually has a whole nother offshoot because funk is completely different than the whole jazz thing. I was telling you all about yeah. that before because funk is, hip hop is funk. And, uh-huh. and, 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 and that's just the way that it is. They're married. But um, jazz um, became an influence of hip hop at a certain point mm-hmm. and then like we just kind of took hold of it and made a whole separate genre of it but um, so jazz itself is a genre also originated mostly by African Americans um, in New Orleans here in the US and it was about mm, the late um, 19th or early 20th centuries. Mm-hmm. And, it, and it has some origins in the blues. It does have some origins in um, Negro spirituals, as Ant was talking about before, some, some folk music, uh-huh. some what they would call ragtime music, and a bit of classical music. Just a little bit. Classical music with some stank on it. <laughs> right. Exactly. That's pretty much kind of what it is. And it uh-huh. when it first came out to them now, they what they are it's like hip hop. It's like when you say hip hop as an all encompassing term. Um, when you say hip hop what you really mean rap. Right, yeah. So like when they say jazz, what they mean is bebop and modal, but jazz is much more broader, a lot more broader than that. Like, cause 
the first jazz to get really like super duper popular was like um more of a a big band. Mm-hmm. New or- like the like the New Orleans, you know, swing big band type of jazz, not bebop at that point. And it was very early on. It was like in the early 1900s. So then. By about the 1940s is when you start seeing bebop. Bebop was very different, but and jazz and hip hop almost parallel one another. Very odd. I was, I was waiting to say that. Yeah, I was. Yep, I was, I was thinking about that the other day. They uh, they kind of follow the same path a little bit because it starts Whoa. one way and then it branches out and goes another way and then eventually it winds up. You know, with Kenny G, which is where we are. <laughs> like, I, I was gonna say Dave Kaz. I was gonna say Dave Kaz. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My dad loves Dave Kaz. I don't want to attack Dave Kaz. My dad like fucking. My dad loves jazz. He loves bebop. He loves all, but he loves all of it. He'll even listen to that radio like music, yeah. jazz, and most people that are jazz purists fucking can't stand. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, with that point too, with the point about how hip hop and jazz mirror, I was gonna say that like a big part of both sounds is like improvisation. It which, is which I think lends to why there's so many different branches of it. Because yeah. it was like on the spot creativity, like top of the head. You'll it never is. hear this again. you'll never hear this again. Very much right, so. yeah. Yep. Which it was very part? much like that. But it was still, but it was off the top, but it was off the top fucking fantastic it, was it wasn't fantastic. off the top like <laughs> low yeah. fucking brow like the shit that they were they were playing all these crazy ass the syncopation in jazz oh big word yep <laughs> they ain't never gonna be able to wrap their mind or like this shit that they low vibrating on they can't mm-hmm. wrap their minds around this fucking, you, you fucking can't, complicated you can't. ass shit you can't come in here with that weak shit. We gotta educate mm-hmm. the people. What's what syncopation? Somebody Google that real quick. Oh, you I know what syncopation is. You know what I syncopation is? I know what it is. I've heard the phrase, but there's a couple listeners out there who haven't. Okay. So, so Andy, did you, did you find the, it? This is, the, this is the Wikipedia answer. And okay. Syncopation involves a variety of rhythms which are in some way unexpected, which make part or all of a tune or piece of music off beat. Which, this is my definition, <laughs> done correctly, is funky than a motherfucker. Hell yeah. <laughs> it's funky than a motherfucker and it's hard to duplicate. Yep. So what y'all think? Of, what y'all think about artists that try to incorporate both? Like I feel like people like George Duke um, try to incorporate both. Like well, jazz previously and, uh, we had a lot to pick from, but nowadays like it's like Kanye shrug. Well, part of the <laughs> problem you, you is that like jazz, you jazz, like if you're having to use, if you're going to use jazz now, you're still digging in crate, pulling out <laughs> a hard bop, bebop, modal. Uh-huh. Like, when we talk about a lot of the really, really most jazzy, funky producers, like who? Pete Rock, Primo. Oh, no, I wasn't even I was just talking about, I wasn't even just talking about, like, hip-hop artists, though. I was talking about, like, people that's, uh, like, in that particular world, like George Duke. Oh, and, okay. like, like, George Duke incorporates, like, jazz and funk. To, and so, from what I hear. Yeah, because cause it, cause it, cause it got to a point where... It crossed over and like Aunt saying, so many different sounds. So you got fusion, like you got bitches brew, and then uh-huh. it's like once once Miles said it, but at the time that Miles Davis released bitches brew, do you and he was at the forefront of of modal jazz. Right. He was, he was like, also considered, with, um, he was also considered a weirdo. He was also considered a weirdo. But everybody was like, everybody loves kind of it was like this motherfucker's a genius, and then all of a sudden <laughs> bitches brew came out and they were like. The fuck is wrong with this Negro? <laughs> <laughs> like that shit was split down the middle at the time because yeah. people were like, they knew. Because again, as hip hop is a parallel, that was like a, a fucking line in the sand, and people knew where that shit was going after that. It's right. like how we were talking about Nas and Illmatic, and that shit was in the sand. It was like all this shit is dope, but it was right on that line. It was like once we leave this 
area and depart from this area. Once we leave, bitches, bro. Y'all here? Y'all here from here? We wind up with Mr. Magic with Grover Washington Jr. Not saying that that shit is so, so bad, but most jazz purists don't fucking want to hear Toto. Right. Which is what where that shit wound up going. You know, where you get all these different... Or like Steely Dan. I personally love Steely Dan. But would I call that shit pure jazz? Hell no. Probably. No. It's like smooth jazz. Right. Yeah. Don't say it's smooth kinda, jazz. Yeah, it's kind of like the same don't, thing. Don't say smooth with. jazz to a, to, a, to a straight up jazz lover. Right, it's it's kind of the same thing we dealing with now, where we got like artists that we consider like top tier, like you know the Kendricks, the Lupes, and you know whoever else is running around right now. Uh, but the like the Dylons, the Dylons, <laughs> okay. Dylons, Dylons, Dylons. <laughs> <laughs> I spit but, hot fire. <laughs> but you know, like we got those, we got those type of artists running around, and like you know, what I'm saying like you know they they're dope lyricists or whatever, but like their music overall isn't like what we consider pure hip hop. Right. It, it, yeah, we stepped away from that. Mm-hmm. I think we got a hard time letting go too, though. You know, I argue that a lot. Like we have a hard time letting go. Well, I mean, okay, so we arguably. When when jazz, hip hop, or jazz rap, um, fused, in around like the the late '80s, early '90s, when we started mm-hmm. seeing um, a lot of our conscious, because like we talked about conscious, a lot of the conscious set used jazz. But I mean, duh, that's <laughs> the reason why they used it is because I because we were just talking about how it's going to take somebody more complicated to do more complicated. And so that conscious yeah. that they're, they're, they're a complicated bunch. So you're going to get, you know, the tribe called quest and the day left souls and, and, um, the diggable planet and the jungle mm-hmm. brothers. And, um, and they didn't just use these, you know, like Gil Scott Heron and last poets and like all these, you know, Billy Jazzy um, right, right, people. Yeah. They uh-huh. also they brought in these people mm-hmm. like um, Q Tip and De La. And you know, Q Tip produces for um, Tri Car Quest for those who don't know that. Um, when he started producing stuff, they brought these people in. Like on the on the low end theory, um, Tribe's second album, they brought in. Ron Carter. And it's not the just like a sample. It's not no. just like a sample. They, you they brought in Maceo Parker. Person. They brought in Fred Wesley. Like the funk. People who play funk and jazz. People who, They brought them in and had them actually physically playing on shit. So, mm-hmm. you know, it's always very dope. But see that they fused that shit together. And then now you have the, uh, the fucking roots. You know, kind of taking it, kind of taking it back there because because they're like, oh yeah, you know, it's like and a natural they, progression that they would move from you know the jazz samples and then the actual jazz is coming into play to them right. actually just being a band. Yeah, like yeah. we can just do that, just do that. Like why go to them? I mean, not even just saying not go to the forefathers or whatever, but it's no longer like necessary. Yeah. Like I want to be like the forefathers. I want to do the same thing, and I'm going to do it the same way. We're well, not the same way in terms of performance, but and the roots are like super jazzy. They're we're gonna always read always music. Jazzy. We're gonna improvise with it. We're gonna do a lot of improvisation. Like, yeah. Right. But I think, and they I, do think that. It, I, I think it's good to actually like you know um, emphasize that though. You know what I'm saying? Instead of just you know if you got the accessibility to like um, get like a. a a uh, solo from a actual jazz musician, like for example, like we didn't talk about it in the um in the episode, but um Nas using his dad to uh, mm-hmm. yeah, that's true to to actually play the instrument on um Life's a Bitch, you know what I'm saying? Like if you got the if you can actually do that, I think that's 
helpful. That's more helpful to the um, culture than anything. And, that and you know what, though? That's that's way more funny poignant, too. It's what, I'm sorry, Anthony, what? I said that that little snip right there at the end compliments the song is like way more poignant, too, that he actually came oh, in yeah. and played that note instead of not oh, just yeah. sampling it. Right, yep. yeah. That's true. Well, you know what? I think, too, because we just talked about that, that's another reason why somebody like Nas is who he is because he had influences that that came from a wide range and that came from other places. He wasn't just some dude from um, Queensbridge. You know, he had right. he had a lot of different influences. Like even when you see his documentaries and stuff, he talks about that. He, you know, his dad was a, a, um, a trucker player. He he got this education that we're talking about these fools need he already had that education come out the gate right and so that's, he's, that's the that's the um that's the criteria that, that they feel they don't need to have they don't need to have that you know um experience or that education on music to just go in and you know uh do a song well, I mean, when you know better you fucking do better right Unfortunately, the household today is a little different. I mean, you don't necessarily have those parents listening to the same kind of, or even listening to music in the same way, you know? That's true. Right, like I was watching an interview with uh, DJ Premier. He was talking about like how, you know, his mother was like, you gotta be careful with the records. You don't play with the records like that, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. you know. And now it's just like, you, you got a playlist and you turn it on. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> it's just different. Yes, I don't know. I I I don't know. And see, I don't know. For me, my dad gave me a jazz, jazz education when I was young. You know, I got that shit when I was young too. So, but when I was listening to like Tribe and I was listening to Daylight, like I started reading liner notes. I wanted to know where those samples came from, mm-hmm. and they introduced me to so like many other different types of of music and different you know not just different um genre but like different depths of music different right um you know color things that right. I wasn't oh. looking for and I you know that that shit enriched the hell out of my life that yeah. is liner is optional now liner knows is optional now that's some fucked up shit you don't gotta see the liner notes ahead unless you go looking for them yeah. That's another thing that's not like uh that's like uh done regularly now either like um just focusing like we talking about Tribe Called Quest and mm-hmm. like I appreciate the way that low end theory was focused on a particular sound. So like they wouldn't just mm-hmm. sample anything for the sake of yep. it. They was like, you yep. know, they was focused on a particular sound for that particular um mm-hmm. album. I feel like that too when you hear like Mecca and the Soul Brother. Yeah. Like Pete Rock is the same way. And so is and so is um Premier. Like when you hear an album in its entirety, it definitely has a like even not just playing um the album that um Anthony wants to have sex with. <laughs> <laughs> Hard to earn. Uh, uh, um, but like like the other stuff that Pete Rock I see the other stuff that um not P Rock but Premier um excuse me produced like Group Home and J Ru the Damager like yeah. when you hear those in their entirety you hear that even though these are samples they have like like Aaron was saying they have all a reason for being grouped together and why that like there's a sound there and that denotes that the people that even though they're rap producers, quote unquote, they're still musicians. Mm-hmm. These are dudes that probably would have been musicians. Because mm-hmm. you have to have an ear, like you have to have an ear and be able to, you know, discern to know when you're ripping five different songs apart and then you're reconstructing what goes with what and why. Uh-huh. A little bit from here, a little bit from there, and then slap it together into something new. Oh, like only, only <laughs> actual musician could really, you know, get down to doing that. I wonder how yeah. many of these producers are actually 
like they have that musician's ear like they you know they hear the jazz and they go oh right. yeah this goes with this and me, me personally, I don't know about y'all, but I pinpoint native tongues as a perfect example for that because a lot of people, a lot of people just, they hear certain samples and they like, oh, such and such did it, such and such did this or whatever. And it's, and they don't understand like, you know what I'm saying, how safely it can be done in a more creative way. It, it can be a very meticulous process depending yeah. on who's behind the wheels. But I, I definitely but pinpoint native be. tongues as a perfect example. I think it, should, it definitely should be, it absolutely should be. <laughs> well, I don't know. Again, like if you got somebody like Q Tip at the helm, you know it's gonna come off like. Uh huh. He got some surprise you know, to pick up on. He sit. He sits and you know he's gonna sit with that shit forever. Right. You know, and like premiere, like, like premiere. Like, a lot of yeah. times, like I don't, I don't found that premiere don't even sample like actual songs. That that motherfucker will find a sound. He'll sample a. <laughs> he'll sample a yep. sound from two different. Yep. Texts. Tracks. That's what I'm saying. Or even two separate tracks. Right. Yep. Get flat sounds together to make a whole new thing. Mm-hmm. That shit is amazing. It really is. It really is. It sets them apart. The people that you know what? really should be out there. You know what blew uh, me away? when I Like, every time I hear the sample um, that that Pete Rock pulled for, um, for Troy... For the song mm-hmm. Troy called They Reminisce Over You. Right. That shit is jazzy slash funky as hell. You would never think that's where that sample. But <laughs> and his ability to like he sampled that shit from something you wouldn't think was jazzy and funky as hell, but it, it had a break. It sounds like right. it was meant to be that way. It was always meant to be that way. <laughs> well, you know, right there where it was, and it was like, but you gotta be listening for that. Like, uh-huh. who digs and then sits around li- listening to this crazy ass shit and then right in the middle? Right. Or right you gotta, at this you gotta, one part. Yeah, you gotta listen to those records to find those sounds. It, it seems like that's the more that's the people who genuinely love what they're doing who do stuff like that though. Man, cause that even that piano sample, <laughs> that piano sample that he um he pulled for um Nas, um the world is yours. Yeah. Like I would have never heard that. It was like six seconds. <laughs> right. <laughs> of the like, of the, like fucking jazziest thing you ever heard. Like I was like, God damn it! How, what the? I'll take that, pin that, slap it with something else, and repeat it, loop it. And now you got a whole yeah, new yeah. But I mean a whole that. New thing. That but see that ain't puffy level. Damn it! I <laughs> <laughs> Just take the whole. Why do I keep? <laughs> <laughs> That shit is way more more sophisticated. Like, you have to... You gotta, (laughs) you know... I I think because jazz is is like a harder medium. You know, like a a much more sophisticated... Did you just say puppy again? (laughs) His his version of it is you gonna eat your cone bread. (laughs) 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 You ain't gonna eat that. (laughs) But uh-huh. I mean, I feel like it, he's. Why are you quoting life right now? Uh, <laughs> 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 I feel like like you have to be somebody who's really gonna sit. Like, be sophisticated yourself. You're really gonna sit with these samples if you're sampling jazz. Yeah, yeah, especially. Uh, like I mean people who are like, like I was saying these quote unquote conscious folks like the ones that are really you have to be a certain kind of person to even to lean over to the to the jazz rap mm-hmm. side of things like Very neat. And I, I hate to bring her up but you know Lauren Hill most deaf um you know all the, all the people that we name Okay, even CeeLo Green. I'm, I'm, I'm saying it. I'm saying it. <laughs> common, you know, yeah. common. Sometimes even currency a little bit. Yeah. I'm but, you know, Eric B and Rakim, you kind of have to be the Fugees, all of them. You know, Gangstar. You, you're not just a regular kind of low-level MC. 
Uh-huh. Or a group or a producer if you're, you know, if you're doing that. Like, the roots aren't, they're not like everybody else. To live is not like everybody else, obviously. Uh, again, right. I feel like a lot of that comes out of the, the the fact that they love to do that sort of thing. Like they love to sit back and dig old records apart and pull out. But not just the DJ right? or the producers, but the artists. I mean, themselves. the artists themselves. Yeah, yeah, the artists themselves. Like I listen to music the same way. Like I'll point out a bridge section of a track. Like they that dope right there. Like we should sample that. Yep. And you know why I think that happened? I think they got their own little shit. Like you know, I love this music shit, and I, you know. They'll just be listening to shit and they just want to hear it. Like, that's, that's why a, lot of, them, a lot of the people that we listen to, the longer that they're out there, they eventually go independent. Because they get yeah. the time and the freedom to do that sort of thing. That's true. Uh, that's that's true. the way to go, kids. Yeah. That's the way to kill kids. Independent. Oh, please. I'm, I need this <laughs> shit to just start rolling. Just everybody do a chance to right now. <laughs> yeah, the game. The game will pick off the ones that don't that don't need to be there. Yes, it, yep. And and that that's what'll happen. It really will. And well, I mean, will we will we bankrupt the music industry if we do that? Because right now, hip hop is a fucking cash cow. Is that necessarily a bad thing? I don't think it is. <laughs> I don't think it is either because like they're. A huge part of the reason, a huge part of the problem with the music industry right now, anyway, is the vultures, like the money hungry. Oh, this is this is like a very lucrative sound right now. Let's milk the shit out of it. Right. And move yeah. on to the next thing. I'm shaking my head right now again. <laughs> Metro Boomin don't know his time coming. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean they all got an expiration stamp on them when they, when they, when they come out. Oh yeah, that's. Day. Definitely. Like, oh, wow. I don't know. Like, back in the day, when, and I, I, it's weird that I, that we were talking about the parallels between jazz and hip hop and like the, the path that they walk and how they're basically the same. They, it started from one place, they elevated to a very high plane and then they dropped down into some weirdness and then all of a sudden, Kenny G. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and elevator music, you know. Elevator, and, elevator music. Elevator musicness. Um, jazzness, but I, I remember, I remember when um, when Puffy. We start the dude for the show. I remember, man, we might call the fucking Puffy episode. I remember <laughs> when when Biggie came out with um, uh, hypnotized. Right. And I, the, I, I. I just was like, oh, I know that sample. Right, yeah. And and that was that that shit was like it was some smooth jazzness. You know, and it, it really even was. though I love I love Herb Albert because the song is Herb Albert Rise. Yeah. I was like, you know, it's all good. I love that song, but that shit was smooth jazzness. And in my head I was like, damn, this shit is over. <laughs> like, I, I remember thinking that even like back then and I was like it was like 96 uh huh and I, I was just like I mean I like the shit just like I liked One More Chance but it was yes, like this shit is fun yeah level the level was, was going on so the level of sophistication uh-huh. was going yeah, that, but that shit was a very I strange thing. The weird. That's because that's because folks don't know what they're doing, or don't care. I mean, their their expectations are different. But is it like Pontius Pilate? Is it like you know? I don't want this man's blood on my hands. Or is it? <laughs> <laughs> or is it? Or is it more like um, Jesus on the cross? Lord forgive them for they don't know what they do. do oh, I mean, do God. they? But like, which one is it? Is it? I'm kind of conscious. <laughs> I'm like, whatever y'all want to do, y'all go do. I'm going to go do me over here. Real hip hop is over here. <laughs> I, I mean, I feel like they're out in the, out in the crowd, y'all, and crucify him. Kind of sort of right now. 
Aku tuh bebel. Aku bebel. What else do you do after that, though? What do you do after that? How much further can you kill something? Are we kicking the corpse now? To beat the deal. That's what it feels like. Maybe it's like it's like corpse kicking time. Oh no. I don't see that's why I'm conscious. I wash my hands. I don't wanna partake in any corpse kicking. <laughs> <laughs> that's, not, that's not my cup of tea. Oh well that second period. Um that that was you know, that was a good um that was a good joint right there. I enjoyed talking about it. <laughs> I enjoy talking about um, the beautiful origins. I love my culture so much. I really do. Uh, I wish more people would appreciate it. Um, and what we got for homework today? Not homework, well, uh, excuse me, recess. 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 Well, you know, because it still is, uh, excuse me, I got to take a deep breath for this one. African American Music Appreciation Month <laughs> <laughs> is only right that we talk about my man Guru, rest in peace. Rest in peace, Guru. Because Guru has always been a jazzy slash funky, funky MC. He always loved that um, monotonous monotone. How can you be so monotone yet so jazzy at the same time? Like I don't understand it. <laughs> but he, he did it effortlessly. Effortlessly. Mm-hmm. Excuse me. He did. I, I think I you know what I think that was. I think it was because. And um, I think this is what's wrong with a lot of rap music now. Like, he was working with a particular producer. Yeah, yep. he, he grew to know his sound. And yeah. he was he was particularly jazzy himself. Yeah. Like, but I think it's... I think really good over Primo. Have we ever heard him promo for a not Primo beat? Anybody? Guru? Yeah, yeah. I was, yeah. I, was, I, was getting, yeah. I was getting to that. I was getting to that because I'm fond of the Jazz and Taz series. Me and that's, too. That's one of those instances where the artist went out to the original artist instead of just sampling or whatever, and pulled them yep. into the project, and they built together. Right. I'm glad that's I didn't that. talk about that. I'm glad you saved that for the end. Yeah, that's what I was, I was hoping you didn't duck into that, but you know. Nah, I was trying to, I was like, you can not talk about Jasmine's hands. I have a feeling. Like, I had to, I love Jasmine's the jazz, jazz, jazz. Now, don't get me wrong, there are some misses on the project. There are. Course. There are some misses, but overall, like, this solid series. Um, I've never listened to the last one. Anything after he died, I kind of was skeptical about. Yeah, and even the one with Solar, the one with Solar is all right, but it's like mm-hmm. it's tarnished. You know? That first John is is my like I bumped that to the I will be in my kitchen. That one and up, I, don't, don't tell nobody like this is like my Lincoln Park love, but like that one and the third oh like the third one is kind of poppy, like it is it's, it's a little bit. Poppy, but is that the I'm, one with um Angie Craig, Stone? That's one with Craig David and Angie Stone on it. Yeah, yeah. but you. Love Craig David, though. You love Craig David. I, I, Craig David is like a uh, little worse. Like, I love him. I can't tell you why. <laughs> 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 it's like, I'm, I can't say it, but I'm finally through to it, you know. But We make episode. food analogies on this show. <laughs> <laughs> everybody can relate. Everybody can relate. You know? He like he likes Scrapple or, or little worse. Please stop I mean? talking about Scrapple. I just ate. <laughs> it ain't for everybody. It ain't for everybody, you know. It's an acquired. It is not. Scrap is not for humans. <laughs> maybe for somebody that's not from Philly. Man. Look, fry it up just right, get it crispy on the outside, you know, a little crispy I want to tell everybody that's not, not from Philly. I used to get talked about so freaking badly when I would talk about my people from down south and how they ate hog head cheese. And then they would tell oh, me about oh. eating scrapple. And I'm like, do you MFers know you eat the same damn thing in a different fucking form? You know, you eat cow head. <laughs> you eat cow little, stuff. Little cow, little chicken, little pig. Well, it depends on which scrapple you eat. <laughs> Whichever flavor it is, that's not the whole thing. That's just what's But I'm the sorry, Guru and, and Jackson Matas is not scrapple. Nah. It's nah. not scrapple. It's not. I mean, it is. A, it's an acquired taste. Like it ain't for everybody. 
you can't just jump yeah. right in on Jazzy Taz and say, oh, this shit hot. Like, that ain't No, nah, you really can't. You got to listen to, like, the first two Gangstar albums first. <laughs> That's like the one I would, I would play all of Gangstar's catalog before you get anywhere near Jazz and Mataz. No, the reason I say the reason I say the first two the reason I say the first two games start out is because they more jazzy like Primo Primo didn't start Primo didn't start getting into that other sound until um hard to earn. Are you counting no more, Mr. Nice Guy? Yes. (laughs) Oh man, um yeah, I don't know about that one. (laughs) (laughs) But that's like the one that shall not be named. No. <laughs> no. That one hasn't grown on me no, yet. No, no, no. That one has you not grown on me yet. I feel like no more Mr. Nice Guy is like is like Nostradamus. It's like it's not a bad album. It's a it's just it's not a stellar Gangstar um, album. Gangstar album, but it's but I well, mean by comparison. It's really organic then. Oh no! <laughs> Here we go. Because it got a lot better from there. It got a, it's not bad, but it got a lot better from there. Man, <laughs> you know what? I'm not. I, I I don't know. I gotta look at that again. But I, I mean, I get the organics reference because organics is just. I love the roots. I can't listen I to the album. I I can't. I like it. I'm not going. I'm not going. Uh, I'm not going front. I would. I would actually say I like Organics better than uh, No More Mr. Nice Guy. Though. I would too. <laughs> but see, maybe it's too. my nostalgia. I don't. <clears throat> I definitely <throat> don't. No More Mr. Nice yeah. Guy hasn't grown on me. It might be nostalgia for me though. Yeah, Primo. Primo was still trying to find himself on No More Mr. Nice Guy. Yeah, they were kids. They were kids. They, I'm not. Way. I'm not talking to either one. <laughs> but everything after that was fantastic. <laughs> Everything after that, stepping in the arena and all that. I don't, I don't, I don't know. Y'all already know how I feel about Hard to Earn. Um, Moment of Truth was the first Gangstar album that I put on and I loved instantly. Like, all of them had to grow. You want to have, I mean, you want to have sex with it, apparently, so. Well, that would be, like, my main squeeze. <laughs> hard to Earn would be the side piece. <laughs> what? Oh, hell. <laughs> Moment of Truth, Moment of Truth. I'm coming home. I'm coming home for Moment of Truth. Hard to hear than the side piece. I love Moment of Truth. I love, yeah, I think everybody loves Moment of Truth. Yeah, that's probably actually the best game star album. Yeah. Rest I love Google. that album. Yeah, I don't know, though. But I don't know. See, now I'm talking about Hard to Earn and I feel like... Daily Operation is slept on, too. Like, that's one that a lot of people don't... That's true. Talk. It really that's is. That's very true. It's it on. is. Uh, I love that joint, too. Yeah, man, I love okay. Gangstar. I think Gangstar is like it's like my my third or fourth, so like third or fourth on my favorite um, hip hop group list. They gotta be pretty high on anybody's list. No, they're on, they're, they're in my top five. Like, but I mean, there's some they lie and tribe who are also jazzy. Um, I, I put them both in the number one slot. Everybody thinks that's weird and stupid. I kind of do too, but. No, like they're both in the one slot. Together. Yeah, together. Mm, well, I can understand why. Yeah, I, yeah. But no, okay. but yeah, no. Gangstar is freaking. I mean, can you imagine though? Can you imagine Guru rhyming over something that wasn't so gritty? Going back. That wasn't like that. That 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 wasn't what Primo. Was. That's why that's why the solar thing didn't work that great. Mm-hmm. Besides the fact that solar was a allegedly, <clears throat> I had to catch myself for a second. Uh, uh, snake oil salesman, lion sack of shit. <laughs> oh man! I, you know what? I actually heard that. I did not get the whole details of that though. Oh, you didn't read the letter? He's infamous. Oh, that letter pissed everybody off. Mm mm. Everybody read, everybody read the letter. That joint was all over, like, all, all on the I, internet. I was hurt over that letter. Yeah. I was hurt over that uh, my letter. Cousin, uh, my cousin was like, like we all like, know I don't want to know. That's, nah, not on this deathbed, Guru ain't. Not Guru. Guru ain't that fucking petty. Yep. Deathbed. Fuck out of here. Yeah, I didn't like that. No. I didn't like the, even the like the talk and the buzz of that at the time. Um, so I just, 
I kind of just stayed away from it. It's like, like the R. Kelly P tape. I've never seen it. I don't know. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> yeah, we don't, need, we, we don't need to watch the P tape. Like, we don't need to watch the P tape. Like, we get it. I don't, yeah, yeah I didn't want to read the letter because I just, I didn't want to. I, like, I want to, I want a nice, pristine, you know, um, Lady view P. of Guru and his death. Yep. Yeah. Once later. Yeah, let that man be. Yep. Keep his legacy to Yeah, I don't even need to hear it, see it. Mm. I'm, I'm good. I'm cool with it. But yeah, yeah that one, um, that I one like a little left there. That one a little left there. I'm sad now. It, yeah, <laughs> I, I know, right, right. But I mean, we had to talk about Guru, so you're gonna yeah. get a little bit, you know, because I mean. I, I don't have Guru anymore. I don't have, you know, somebody get on there and just really make me just bob my head all hard over a primo beat. But the right. reality is here, you know. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, you know Guru and, was here and, from and, 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 and who's, oh, get the. <laughs> <laughs> that hurt. that shit was the most blasphemous <laughs> thing you could possibly say. That shit that was like hurt. the, um, the uh, the, the fucking MLK episode of Boondocks. It was like, is this what I marched for? <laughs> I should get approvals for this sort of thing. <sighs> is that this what I marched for? Oh my God, this McRib is wonderful. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> uh, bones, ribs, everything. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, again, as ugly as it sounds, it's the truth. Nah, it's not the truth. It's ugly as it sounds. Aaron was like, no, nah. take your truth. Take it's your truth. The, and sh- and it's not the it same yourself. thing at all. It's not the same thing at all. Like, we just got done talking about, like, you know, like, producers focusing on one sound and, like, yep. like you know what I'm saying? Like, premiere, obviously, premiere, like, we got them talking about, like, who, like, produces that simple funk and produces that simple yeah. jazz. And, like, obviously, premiere made a point to stick to, you know, one type of sound the sample. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And he did that for a reason. Well, I mean, now you got kids sampling xylophones in Sesame Street, so. I mean, there isn't right. anything wrong with doing that. That People have done that's both all, of those things, saying, too. Then, but... But it's the way like it. you do it. It's the way you do it. Not that you're doing it. Yeah, it's the way you not. do it. <laughs> I mean, you could get a fucking jazzy at look. If somebody samples a pointer sister singing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, that should be funky as hell. Quali did it. Fez did it. <laughs> well, shout out to yeah, Fez. we know somebody that actually did it. <laughs> shout out See? to DJ Fez. Why you put exactly. that shit? The Mo killed that joint. Eleven, twelve. Uh, Motor General, New Jersey. Hell, hell, yeah. See, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> Nah, that's a lot. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, uh, it's where you're pulling it from and why. Like, these motherfuckers, they are, again, we talked about it before, we talked about it last week. They're pulling all this ambient, um, fucking suicidal shit. Yeah. That's the tone, the tone of this generation. Yeah. All my friends are dead. But see, that go back to the, like, the crossbreeding of everything. Like, you know, like, I was, uh, uh, watching um, something about Yachty, and he was talking about like his Merlin Manson is one of his influences, and it's like when that. is that? Yeah, and it's like when is that ever had a place in what we do? DMX. Mm, that's a little bit different, I think, though. A little bit, but yeah, he kind of yeah, cracked, that, cracked that doorway. He, I mean, he was covered in ghost blood in that album. Eminem, yeah. Eminem, Eminem too. Eminem too. Eminem is different though. I, and, uh, and and we all know why. Yeah, right. I mean, see, but this were, see that's what I'm talking about kid, when stuff is taking out of stuff. That, you're a little kid watching that. Right. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Little kid. When that was exactly. Popping. That's what I'm talking about. That's how stuff get taken out of context though, because mm-hmm. it's like just because I see you know maybe DMX you know incorporated some Merlin Manson or Eminem did, and like that's yeah. who I'm looking to for my example is like I'm gonna throw that in there, and now you know and at it's, the same time. It's but at the same time, Soldier Boy is your Melly Mel. <laughs> right. See, that's, yeah, that's crazy. Mel. What the fuck are you talking about? None of these 
I'm just, go together. I'm None of these fucking. In, I'm trying to put it in perspective. Put it in damn belly I'm trying to put it in perspective. <laughs> I'm not even gonna let you have that dumb shit you just said. I'm not letting right. you have but, that. No, you might not it, like it. it. No, you might like, not like, like it. it. <laughs> no, in some in some perspective, he's right though. Like, the, like yeah, cause these, these weirdos, like these weird, you call them melodious. Like to these weirdos, like Soulja Boy is like talk the bad beginning about the of some guy. other shit. Soulja Boy can't fuck. Ah. 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 Soulja I just got done. I just got done talking about digging, and like they don't dig that far. So like you know, the beginning for them yeah. is like Soldier Boy and Bow Wow. Uh-huh. You know what I'm YouTube, YouTube era. But that isn't the beginning of anything. That's the end. That is the end. <laughs> <laughs> but that, yeah, that's crazy. They don't know that though. Yeah, don't care neither. Well, I mean, I feel like a lot of them, too. So many of them, the, their beginning is like Biggie and Pac. Okay. Biggie and Pac out so. loud. I think that there's there's a generation in between that's like taught to think that Biggie and Pac is the beginning, but they didn't really like it. <laughs> and then a generation after them was like, fuck them niggas. <laughs> right, yeah. Exactly. No, I don't yeah. know because because like when I I see so much Biggie and Pac love out there by by you know non millennials, just re- mm-hmm. like regular millennials. Yeah. Like that's, they that's are strong. In, they're strong Biggie Pac lovers out there. That's ingrained. That's like it's almost to the point that Biggie and Pac is like one of the elements of hip hop. And that that scares me too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, I mean, it does because that, like you always say, um, Aaron, that's dangerous. It is. Yeah. <sighs> it, that's like extremely detrimental. You don't want. But that's what that's always my same feeling with making rap all encompassing and all inclusive. Yeah. Hip, hip rap is not all encompassing. It is rap. It is a component of. It is not the entire culture. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you can't make Biggie and Pac the entire freaking hip hop culture. They're not. Right. They are very specific points to start with but people don't understand it because they don't understand the origins like you know, people they not checking for like uh you know uh the funk musicians and the jazz musicians that we're talking right. about it you doesn't matter saying? none of that matters none of that has anything but you know to do what? With probably and never even heard them a, and it's gonna post a whole slew of them uh, aren't mm-hmm. you and yeah I got because we can't we Love can't me. continue to have this bullshit we might even Going do on. I might even Like, we need list. just a big, long, you know, we might need a big, long-ass list. And, like... What, of, like, of like our favorite our favorite artists as far as Jay and Funk? Yeah, John to go and listen to. Go back um, and listen to. Yep, like, go back and listen to. Well, Aaron and I like this one right. series that comes on where they break those records down. Yeah. Um, uh-huh. It comes on... What is it? 106? Mm-hmm. Uh, it's on uh, YouTube. Uh, yeah, it's on YouTube. Uh, Vin Reek and breaking down samples. Yeah, when um Vin Reek and breaks his samples down. Yeah. Uh, 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 wax he, only. Wax only. And wax only is the series. And wax only, it, he doesn't talk much. He just he plays the samples. Most right. of which, yeah. most of which on these albums. They're, you know, classic hip hop albums, most of them, and they are most of them are funk and jazz samples. Mm-hmm. Right. For the most part. You know, and everybody freaking loves it. Like, he has tons of subscribers. And people be yeah. like, don't you ever stop doing this? We love you. Continue this. Even yeah, though it is because everybody, the because everybody, but. people that appreciate music know that people need that. They need to understand that, like, this ain't just some. This ain't something that, you know, Soldier Boy and Bow Wow started on their computer. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, this shit it evolved from somewhere. It evolved from somewhere. Yeah, this shit is some, you know what I'm saying? It evolved from somewhere, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, it's a, it's a lot of jazz and funk artists that don't even get the love they deserve, you know what I'm saying? Because, like, you know, um, it, they, they might have got, like, some shit ripped from, like, some obscure part of their record. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That they people might not don't even notice. <laughs> right, people don't even recognize it. Well, you know what though? 
I mean, and I'll ask you this, Aaron, and, and I mean, do you think, because I think we covered a little bit last week, do you think at this point it still matters that A, you're sampling this obscure thing that is now going to bring maybe like more light onto you, like somebody's going to go dig for you, and B, do you think it matters that, that you out the DJ sample? Like, does it still matter now? Um, that's like two an- two different answers for me for each question. Like, I feel like it matters in terms of the way that it's done, but it shouldn't, you know, just because of like the way that it's been done before. Like, that was like the biggest mystery was finding out what was used on what particular part, like digging it out and realizing like how dope that is to put that together to make that sound. So, 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 so what you're saying is, and I think this is how I feel about it too, because I was thinking about that for a while. I've been thinking about that because, like, you know, Aaron was saying, there's certain parts of the culture that you don't touch, and we were talking about not out in, you know, the the um the DJ slash producer samples, but at the same time, right. I and, it. and well, that too, but in light of trying to preserve the culture. Like, is it, isn't it, it, it seems like maybe it's more important at this juncture to save the culture through mm-hmm. the love and appreciation of that sample-based, you know, that jazz and funk sample-based hip-hop and showing the love of it and showing exactly, you know, what was taken and how it was taken and what the producers did. I think that helps preserve the culture more when you start shining the light on that. But is that only pertaining? So, I don't think. I think. I think it just speaks more to the artist. Like if you the yeah. if you the type of artist that don't that's not willing to dig that deep, then like you know you you know what I'm saying you you mab as we say M A B <laughs> mediocre at best. You know what yeah. I'm saying if you're not that type if you're not the type of artist to dig that deep, but if you're the type of artist to listen and be like, oh man, you know what I'm saying and like. That was that was dope the way you know such and such flipped that sample and turned it into that. Let me find out who that artist is, and then you and then you like cross reference that artist and come across a bunch of other artists that you know mm. um, that come from that same genre of music. If you that type of artist, then you know what I'm saying I feel like you can you can do bigger things than somebody that you know not digging as deep. At the same time, too, it's like, are we just talking about in regards to jazz and funk? Or because, like, with, again, I'm going to use Kanye as an example. With uh, Jesus, he used, well, like, a Brazilian. He sampled a lot from a Brazilian band or whatever. Right. That's but still I, jazz, I blame that. I, I right. blame that. That's what I'm I blame asking. that on. I blame that on arrogance, though. It's like I just got done talking about earlier. Like, um, when you listen to Premier and Pete Rock and Native Tongues um, and like the samples that they use, they use them for a reason. It was like, this is going to be our sound that defines us. Yeah. Whereas though Kanye, I feel like what Kanye did, I feel like he branched off into different areas. Like you hear like on graduation, he using, he'll go from Daft Punk to Michael Jackson, PYT. And it's like, what the fuck? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you know, you know. I mean, at the same time, isn't that an extension of trying to so hard saying that. Well, Isn't I mean, I feel like Kanye like, would do something like that. So <laughs> like think. building on that, like, like, oh, you dug this and nobody knew what it was. I'm gonna go to a Brazilian rock band. Like, I know you ain't heard this, right? But that's different. That's different than concentrating your sound into one area and turning it into something that defines you. And I feel like he used to do that. He, he doesn't want to be defined, though. I think that that's what the issue is. He's a Gemini. Y'all know that. He wants yeah. to be. People can't use right. they want their cake and eat it too. He Don't doesn't want to be nailed down. He <laughs> wants to be here, there, everywhere, all over all right. the place. I'm a Gemini too, and I don't like that as an excuse. Yeah, but that's yeah, that that type of thing is dangerous. Like it's okay, what like in that's of more what his personality leans towards. Like he he's gonna want to do the eclectic, unexpected. You know. Right. Is there is there something wrong with that? No, it's, I'm just dang, it's that dangerous if you're doing not. it in the way that he does it, though. Like well, he does now, it in a way where yeah. they don't have they don't have the proper context. <laughs> like Kanye is simple, Kanye is simple. Like you know, some some strange shit, and like you know, it don't have 
it don't have a concentrated sound that something like a low end theory has. So like when you listen, when you listen to the graduation, you being dragged from one side of the spectrum to another. I, I feel like again because of the progression of like the attention spans and whatnot, that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's almost necessary these days. Like you gotta I don't go. Know, cause I like I actually liked graduation. I thought it was. No, I don't. I, I don't hate graduation. Yeah. I don't hate. Yeah. I don't hate graduation. I just think. But I know I what just, you mean. I yeah, know I know what he's doing. It's like when you somebody when you know what they're actually doing with those sounds, it's like, dude, wow. Yeah. It's, but the you know what I'm jumping saying? around these days for a whole album, if you want to keep the audience's attention, you know how hard that is today to do this today. Like a lot of the artists that we know will tell you flat out, like they'll opt to do an EP because people's attention spans just aren't what they used to be. But they're contributing to that shit consistently. I agree. I agree. Like, I had that's part of your problem. I'm like, why? And, I'm like, and, and why can't I definitely agree with Aaron with that part of it. You know, I agree. Like, I agree. I do agree on that, and they contributed to it. But it's like, it's like, it's hard. It's a hard sell because, like, you want to be successful. You want to get the music out there. You want to get the fans what they want to hear. But at the same time, like, they don't know what they want to hear. <laughs> and, and like, I, we talked about this on previous shows. I can't remember what show we talked about. It, and I was like, maybe it was last, the the last show that we just did. Um, where we're talking about Yachty yet again, but nah, um, <laughs> but it's it, like people are not consuming on a high level either. Like yeah. once you've dumb, like we've dumbed them down so low, they can't. But see, when I was teaching you all, when I was teaching, I did. Did I ever bring down the quality of the literature I taught in my classroom? You didn't bring down the quality, no. You might have had no, to adjust the way you I, gave it no, to us. No, I pushed that shit exactly. I yeah. pushed that shit up high. It still was high. It was still fucking Shakespeare. Yeah, you had to adjust I the way you presented it. I was still teaching Shakespeare, and it was. I changed the way I presented it. <laughs> okay, and I made you all rise up <laughs> to that shit. You don't. That's not how you bring people up higher. You don't keep dumbing shit down low. Like, yeah, Public yeah. Enemy used to want people to be... They sampled... And there were a lot of funk samples in, in um, with the Bomb Squad. Shout out to um, Hank and Keith Shockley. I like I like the way Public Enemy sampled, by the way. I love it, too, yeah. but you can't do that shit anymore. Like, you would be broke if you did that. That's, yeah, that's too dated. You can't do that. Cause it, well, no, it's not that. It's because they those samples that they did were too dense. Like, every song might have 25 samples, 30 samples in it. You can't do that anymore. Yeah. But, and they, um, they passed it off. They passed it off to the next person, though. They did. But they, yeah. but they just... You... They made it so that you could party to that shit and move your ass, but they were bringing you someplace at the same fucking time. Mm -hmm. It wasn't just that they were making party music. It's a way Mm -hmm. to do that shit. But I feel like, like what Aaron is saying, Kanye wants to be something. And this is how I feel about, I love y'all Gemini's, this is how I feel about so many of you. You are a walking dichotomy. You want to be one thing, but you actually wind up being the other. Kanye wants to be something that is so substantial. Kanye, what Kanye really is, is superficial. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately. Kanye just wants to be and that shit, And that shit <laughs> comes through. Yeah. And, and he, he fucking tells you, and he's been telling you, he was like, yeah, I know I was supposed to wear this backpack and I was supposed to, you know, but I went to go buy some ice instead, like everybody else from Mr. Jacob. Yep. <laughs> like, yeah. Okay. I feel like his sound. I feel like his sound was more concentrated uh, around that time too. Like if you listen to like when he when he was working with people like uh, Dilated Peoples and uh, Slum and Village like, and and, and, like Talib. and uh, Talib Kweli. Like he would mm-hmm. use more soul samples. He would use like you know what I'm saying. Yeah. It was now. Now would you say that was because that's the crowd that was giving them play? Yep. I would say that a hundred percent. Yep. That's that's horrible, it's horrible. Well, it's true. It, it because tarnishes, then, but it like, tarnishes I mean, all that stuff for me now. Yeah, yeah. I, duh. That, that's what I was just saying. Like Kanye wants to be this thing. Kanye is this thing. 
but it's annoying it's annoying to people like us because we we know that he knows better and he knows what he's doing like kanye he is, does he's not, he not just some dude banging on a laptop or a nope. keyboard you know what i'm saying nope. like you know he he knows his music well enough to know Kanye uh, had what, those kind of influences that we were talking about earlier that a common would have or a Nas would have. He's been taught to know better. He's just right. born at the wrong time, I guess, maybe. No, he he decided, he made a conscious decision to go in a certain direction. Right. It's like, I'm going I'm to sample, sample anything I can and I can do that because I'm kind of fucking gay. <laughs> like, that's how he does it now. You see what that turns uh, to? See what that turned into? Sample food yeah. sampling people that sampled other samples. <laughs> Kanye knows way better than I can't. I'm done. I can't. I can't even. So, um, for homework next week, of course, because we're still in African American Music oh. Appreciation Month. <laughs> <laughs> next month, next week, we're gonna be talking about, um. R&B music, rhythm and blues, and its origins, and how R&B, basically, and hip hop have intertwined, and how they've gotten diluted with one another. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I, I kind of was thinking, I would bone like, up I on hip hop for home. Oh uh, well, for homework, I would bone up on just the origins of R&B and where rhythm and blues comes from, and slash race music, period, because. Mm. Like all this shit used to all be thrown into one big ass category. It wasn't even separated out the way it is now. Back in the day. Way I back in the day. I to bring up a point with the with the R and B show. Uh oh. Yeah. I, I I've been thinking a lot lately. We all know, like, I'm not big on female MCs. I'm also not big on R and B. I want to discuss the psychology behind that. Like, am I a misogynist? <laughs> Um, I've been asking that question to you. I don't think so. I mean, <laughs> I don't think so. I, I don't. I don't know how to feel about that. I don't know, but, but let's talk about that. <laughs> let's talk about that, baby. In the future, in the future, we gotta discuss that. Yeah, we gotta discuss that. So, um, that is the show. It was jazzy. It was funky. Go I got to push the button. Billion times because I kept saying Puffy's neck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I couldn't get out of it. I couldn't get out of it. it it's the, today was the impending doom button show. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. Yeah, for the month, for the month, it is appropriate. Unfortunately, yeah. Wait till we start talking about um, the East Coast, West Coast beef. I don't even know how I'm going to get through that. <laughs> how are we going to even talk about that? Because his name is going to be in every freaking sentence we utter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We might as well just do a perpetual. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> that's going to be crazy. Yeah, so that's that's our show. And um, hope that you join us next week for the R&B show. Look out for a YouTube playlist of jazz artists. Yep. Oh, that, oh, that would be uh, that's awesome. Uh, good idea. You going up? I got a couple funk artists I'm, I want to throw up there. Oh, who? Uh, well, in particular, um, Fat Larry's band from Philly. Shout out, my. Ooh, cool. Let's talk about do uh, bad brains count? Why do you always bring bad brains into every conversation that they don't belong in? <laughs> I just like name dropping. I just like name dropping. Uh, I'm like the game. I'm like the game out here. I just like name dropping. You know what I mean? <laughs> I like, I like, I like Mandrill. I like War. Mandrill, Mandrill, no, Mandrill. Yeah, Mandrill, no, Mandrill. Mandrill. Mandrill is dope. Mm-hmm. I like, My I like people that. My Mandrill, half Mandela. Uh, <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> Um, what was that? Uh, Mr. Black Game Theory? What was that? Game Theory? The one with the bat on the cover? Yeah, yeah, that's Game no, Theory. It wasn't Game Theory. That was, it, was, it was Rising Down, I think. Yeah, it's Rising Down. The one with Get Busy. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no. I'm Okay, for some reason, I'm, I was thinking Game Theory, but Phrenology's cover was in my head. Like, what is going on with me today? Phrenology was <laughs> really <laughs> getting it in, man. It's hard to keep up with him a lot of times. Consistent. That's that catalog true. consists of all classics. <laughs> 
Yeah. I gotta go play phrenology while I just. I love I need, to play some, I need to play some thought at work. So. I love thought at work. It's oh nothing God. better than like the video with Black Thought standing there cheesy with most deaf ripping thought at work apart. Like that shit right there. That's so hip hop. So hip hop. Man. Black Thought cheesy. Most deaf ripping that shit apart. I love that shit right there, boy. Yeah. Yeah. Makes me want to shed a tear a little bit. <laughs> Clench fist in the air again. How you feel about them, like, just every night, you know, behind Jimmy, just playing, like, little cute ukuleles and stuff? Uh, I think it's yeah. ironic. It's I'm ironic and it gives, you something, it gives you something to look out for because Questlove is, like, serious about that, too. Like, everything that he plays has some sort of significance behind it. Yeah. Depending on the guest. I, mean, I, don't think, I don't think that they all, because everybody's like, they just a complete sellout. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know that I feel that way about it. Yeah, I don't look at it like that. Nah, they ain't sellout. No. And those classroom, those classroom concerts is everything. Those classroom <laughs> joints are like the best ever. That's everything. Like, I need, I, I need that. I fucking love that shit. <laughs> I need to get, I need to get myself a fucking kitty xylophone. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> and, a, and a kazoo would like hop in there. Let me just, just tell you, like... the, first time, the first time I ever actually listened to that Adele song, Hello, was the Roots yep. Classroom concert version. That was the very first time I ever you listened to it. You never heard it before then? I heard it in passion. I just never went bothered to listen to it. I'm, I'm That's how I first heard Megan Trainer. I had it's heard R&B. Megan Trainer song. R&B hating names. I don't hate it. It's just not for me. <laughs> I don't hate it. It's, it's, oh, it's y'all gonna find bacon. out how much Ann hates R and B next week when we do the R and B show. I got weird picks too, though. Like I like certain R and B, and I can't. Whatever. I, can't I tell you why. Whitaker, that shit. Like, like Craig <laughs> David. Like, why do I like Craig David? I Forrest, Forrest Whitaker. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Forrest. Run, Forrest, run, run, Forrest, run. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, check out the Adele <laughs> and the Roots classroom concert. They killed that John. Yeah, and watch Megan Trainer because like that's the that's how I got introduced to um her song. But like, I'm all about that bass, about that bass. Yeah, I I, that I never too. heard that song before that. I heard it in passing, but again, like I was never pressed to go li- listen to it. Mm-mm, it was a. Uh... Yeah, I've heard it. Yeah. It sounded, and you know what? She sounded really good. They usually do sound good, like better than you would expect. Better than they do on their records, which is weird because you're sitting in like a small office. They do. Right. Even the old girl who sang a "Call Me Maybe" sounded better in the classroom musical uh-huh. instrument study. Maybe it was Black Love Thought backing her up. <laughs> what is Black Thought really doing back there? It was Black Thought backing her up. <laughs> Black Thought be singing. I feel like he really has the ukulele. Who has the ukulele? He had a ukulele in the Adele drum. Yeah, you really do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, let's let's end the show on a high note with the Adele ukulele. Uh, school is officially out. Woo!